Okay, physical properties of matter are going to be properties that you're going to be able to observe with your senses. Uh, sight, smell, sound. Uh, here we have three examples of uh, different elements. I have lead, I have sulfur, and I have a piece of copper. And just by looking at the video, you can see that there are certain properties that you can see. So we're going to focus on those. Uh, the copper is a reddish orange. It's very shiny. Uh, most metals tend to have a physical property of being shiny. Uh, the sulfur, being a non-metal, is not shiny. You can see it's not going to, it's not shining in the uh, light. And the lead, another metal, also is shiny. Uh, the video is not showing it as well. It's, it's, but it's not quite as shiny or as lustrous as another term as what the copper is. Um, Another property of metals is that, a physical property is that they are going to be malleable. I can take this, I can bend it around. Um, the copper is a little less malleable than what the uh, copper is, or I'm sorry, the lead is. I can take this copper and bend it and crease it, and you see that that crease is going to be hard to get out now. But if I take this lead, I can bend it and take it back, and that crease comes out fairly easily. That's a property of this lead that it is more malleable than what the uh, copper is. And then the property of, uh, physical property of this sulfur is that it's not malleable at all. If I were to take a hammer and give this a tap, you'll see that it doesn't bend, but it actually shatters into little pieces. If I were to hit this piece with a little more force, I would be able to break this piece of sulfur up into much smaller pieces. But I want to keep it intact. So I think you get the idea that we have some physical properties here of these elements that are unique to them. One of the other things about physical properties is that we can observe them, and when we observe them, they don't change what that material is. This is still copper, even though I bent it. I can fold it up into even smaller shapes and stuff. It's still copper. Same thing with the sulfur. Even though I've broken it up into some smaller pieces, all those smaller little pieces are still sulfur. And same thing with the lead. I could take the lead, and it's so malleable or soft, I can tear this lead it's still lead. I have two pieces of lead now. But those are physical properties because they are uh, the same material even though I've after, after I've caused those changes to occur. Okay, here's an example of a uh, physical change. We have a test tube, a high temperature test tube, but made out of glass, clear. Uh, place it inside of the uh, paper towel and give it a good smack. And what we have is still the Kymax test tube, only it uh, looks a little different. It's still glass same compounds, but now in a different state, broken. I know you're all very familiar with the uh, states of uh, solid, liquid, and gas. I mean, we've known about those since we were in kindergarten, now, or even before. Now, I have here a sample of solid copper to sulfate. Uh, the copper ion gives the uh, blue tint to the uh, solid. I uh, have a solid stopper. I have a liquid inside of this flask. Uh, this is water. Um, I'm not gonna, I don't have a gas. I can't really contain a gas here very well. I could show you an empty beaker and call it a gas, but I think you get the idea. Now, <clears throat> there is a fourth not necessarily state, but phase that we uh, uh, use in chemistry a lot, and that is when something is dissolved in water. Uh, for example, I'm going to take this solid and I'm going to put some of that solid into this flask, stop it up, and give it a good shake. And what will happen is some of that solid is going to begin to dissolve. 
if we look at this, we can see now that uh, the, the solution, the liquid inside of this uh, flask, is getting a blue tint. And the more I shake it, <coughs> the more that's going to dissolve. You can see it's getting a little bit more blue. Now, that liquid inside here now, we would describe as being an aqueous solution. The aqueous being that the copper sulfate is dissolved in the water. The water is still present. The copper sulfate is still present. The difference is, is that the copper sulfate has been dissolved in this water, and we call it aqueous then. If I were to take uh, the water and boil it away, all that copper sulfate would still be there afterwards collected in the bottom of the flask. And that's what the fourth phase or state that we might call it in chemical reactions, and it's symbolized with the uh, AQ, representing aqueous.